See, I've always thought that the first sentence of a book, you know, kind of gives you an idea of how your relationship with the book would go. Like, think of it as a first meeting, right? You meet this person who is gorgeous and charming and funny. Okay, you can't tell that they are charming just yet, but they look gorgeous. So you automatically assume that they will be charming and you assume that they will be funny and that you would have like great conversations and they would blow you away with their personality. And then they open their mouth and the first thing they, they say just has you like... That was unexpected. But like... <sighs> The first words when you meet someone and like you're feeling that connection and all of that like it just it goes a long way it's the same thing with books like you meet someone who is gorgeous on the outside but totally and completely stupid on the inside and you know this because they open their mouth and all you can hear is garbage or someone who is gorgeous on the outside but uh, very boring very bland you know or someone who doesn't look as gorgeous, doesn't look as fine on the outside, but then they open their mouth and you fall in love. For me, it's the same thing with books, you know. Some books look great on the cover. If you know me, you know that I judge a book by its cover. If it's pretty, I'm gonna wanna buy it. I'm gonna, I'm most likely going to buy it. And um, it's just, sure, it might look pretty, but the very first sentence usually tells me if this is a type of story I would enjoy, if it's a type of story I would love. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I do a compilation of 10 opening sentences that had me hooked from the very start? Hello everybody, Nora back again. So yes, I'll just go to the very first book whose opening sentence had me hooked and that is The Ones With Purpose by Nozis Ray Cynthia Jelle. Now, wow. So, uh, this opening sentence was a bit interesting. She says, I imagined a dying person's last breath as something resembling an exclamation mark, distinct and hanging mid-air like an interrupted thought. And I just... This book is about the loss of a sister and um, the toll it takes on the family because um, she had slowly died over time because she had cancer. And it just... That opening line just helped me see that, okay, you're going to deal with death, you're going to deal with sorrow, but the writing will be beautiful, and I was right, the writing was beautiful. Next up is Hold by Michael Donko, and um, this first sentence was actually pretty interesting. It says, very short, very succinct. The coffin was like a neat slice of wedding cake. I remember the first time I read it, I was like, what the fuck? That is an interesting, seriously, the coffin, wedding cake, but it just, it gives you a, a hint into the irreverent style of the writing and also an idea into the type of character Belinda is because she's dealing with sorrow and pain, but at the same time, she, her mind just likes to associate things with like things that other people would naturally not gravitate to. That's the kind of mind she has. And I just... I loved it. It was in short, nothing really special, but I just actually did like that first sentence. Next up is the first sentence in Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lenny Taylor. And this I said because the very first time I my very first TBR where I started reading this book, which was in February, I believe. I said that it was the I didn't know what the book was about, but the opening sentence just had me hooked. And that is once upon a time, an angel and a devil fell in love. It did not end well and I just <sighs> heal fated romance this sentence just you you caught a hint of magic and wonder and gods and power and ill fated romance and I just I love it I still I still think this is one of my favorite first sentences ever because it tells you everything about the story and nothing about the story at the same time and it's when you get to the end of the book that you realize just the significance of that opening sentence which i repeat i really loved next is the opening sentence for a gathering of shadows by v e. Schwab. now 
now i have still not read a darker shade of magic um the plan is to hopefully either read it sometime this month or early next month but and this is a big but i was like i remember i read the first sentence of that book um Kel a very peculiar quote and i was like okay no problem and then i was just breezing through a gathering of shadows and by breezing through i mean i opened the first page and it just that sentence this sentence delilah bard had a way of finding trouble sure but at the same time i'm like i love delilah bard i want to know what kind of trouble she fell into i want to read this book like that was my thought process in three steps just because i repeat delilah bard had a way of finding trouble and then there is the first sentence of pride which is a book i finished and i did not enjoy as much as i said in my february wrap-up but i am not gonna lie the first sentence of this book was fucking fantastic and fucking brilliant and fucking hilarious and it goes it's a truth universally acknowledged that when rich people move into the hood where it's a little bit broken and a little bit forgotten the first thing they want to do is clean it up and i just i remember the first time i read that sentence i just burst out laughing i was like oh my god i'm gonna be in for a riot this is a riot a strong way i love the fact that it did it con it paid homage to the original book which this is a retelling of pride and prejudice and it paid a homage to the beginning the opening line of pride and prejudice and at the same time made it its own and at the same time gave us a hint of what the book was going to be about and i just like i said i just it, it was funny i loved it i still love it if i was to read this book based on that opening sentence alone it would be a five star unfortunately i had to take other things into consideration when i was coming up with my rating for pride so uh it's definitely not a five star read at least not for me and then there was the opening sentence in zara the wind seeker by nadio korafo which this is a middle grade book that i enjoyed and like the opening sentence actually just let me read it it says when i was born my mother took one look at me and laughed and i remember i was like she did what what the fuck? what kind of mother laughs at the first sight of her daughter of her daughter and then i read the rest of the book and it just it filled in the blanks of the kind of family zara was born into and of how of course the family the ties that she had the acceptance the acceptance she had experienced because the reason why mother laughed was because she was she, she, she had dada she was a dada that is um she had locks and um that made her because she, she saw locks and where every other person saw a curse or something wrong like every other person in their community saw a curse or something wrong the mother a mother saw it for what it was something beautiful something to be cherished something to be loved something to be appreciated and that was just something that went through this entire book i 10 times out of 10 we totally recommend this book it's short it's sweet it's very vivid very vibrant very mediocre for i loved it but that first sentence that first sentence sealed this deal for me which helped because i'm not a big fan of the cover it's not it's not the prettiest cover but that first sentence was just it was it was worth it it was more than worth it and then the next first sentence that had me hooked is the first sentence in madeline miller's cersei i still have not read cersei yet the plan is to read it next month or the month after um but this opening sentence just it had me hooked and i just i knew i had to read the book i knew i had to have it it says when i was born the name for what i was did not exist and I read that and the first thing that came to my mind was what how, what were you what are you how is there no word for you you're a goddess you're Cersei and then I was just like a witch a goddess she fits into so many she was so many things at the same time so it totally made sense that there was not one word for what she was and and then I started thinking I'm like okay I'm intrigued I want to know more I want Cersei to tell me a story. Next up is 
Miss Born by Brenda Sanderson. Now, I know it's very tiny. Um, I am not a big fan of mass market paperback. I am not a fan of mass market paperback. Um, but I, I was, I ordered, I ordered the wrong books, set of books by accident, and this came in the mail a long time ago, and it's small print is very tiny the pages have started tearing so obviously i'm going to have to buy the paperback and replace this soon but <laughs> i wanted to start reading miss born and then i saw the opening sentence and i was just like you know what? i'm going to take my time and get the paperback and then read the series because the first sentence is sometimes i worry that i'm not the hero everyone thinks i am and i remember i read that i closed it i opened it and i'm like sometimes i'm not the hero everyone thinks i am and i'm like yes please yes i love reluctant heroes i also love heroes that are that become heroes by accident or misjudged heroes um i also love anti-heroes so i just i was reading i read that line and that was just all i was thinking i'm like okay so is this person speaking are they an anti-hero are they a reluctant hero are they an accidental hero you know are they a false hero what type of hero are they exactly and i'm just i'm looking forward to finding that out when i eventually do get my copy but that first sentence has me hooked because your girl does not like traditional heroes who are like, yeah, I give my life for the world with no complaint, with a beautiful smile on my face because I'm an angel and I'm a saint and I'm totally and completely unrealistic. But that's another conversation for another time. And then finally, because I do think I sort of arranged this in the other in which I like them, I enjoyed them, they made me feel things. Finally is the opening sentence for Never Night by J. Christoph, which, <sighs> listen to this, like, just listen to this. It goes, people often shit themselves when they die. That is it. People often shit themselves when they die. Six words. Six words that made me realize that this is a book that will be full of people shitting themselves. Because there will be a lot of people dying. And that made me so happy. Yes, that is my number one favorite opening line. People often shit themselves when they die. I hope I get to read all about it. So, uh, yes, creepy. I know, but those are, <laughs> those are my top, at least at the moment, top favorite opening sentences in books. Please let me know if any of these sentences also resonated with you. Let me know what your first, what your favorite sentence from any book is who knows you might encourage me to pick up the book and read it um if you like this video please do not forget to give it a thumbs up um subscribe if you want to check out my other videos if you want to i make new videos every sundays wednesdays and fridays and i will see you soon until then stay passionate love books love yourself bye